WP. The atomic bomb, the hydrogen bomb. With all the nations of the world trying, it was only a matter of time before someone discovered the Q bomb. The first megatomic bomb without radioactive fallout. A clean megatomic explosive device that would allow man to blast instantly through mountains, dig new channels to the sea, and can even enable man to remove troublesome reefs, which are a constant menace to navigation. Appreciate your help with this experiment, Captain Fathom. Could mean a lot to the United States Virgin Marine. Our pleasure, Admiral. Coast Guard says to stand by, Skipper. Right, Scotty. What about that tidal wave, Admiral? Are you sure we... Entirely safe, Fathom. The explosion will shatter the reef and dissipate into thin air. I know this is a clean bomb, sir, but, uh... <laughs> if it wasn't, Miss Perkins, We'd have lost most of Los Angeles by now. Remember the new highway through Coldwater Canyon? Relax, Perkins. Would I endanger the Argonaut? The Argonaut, no. Me, yes. Swell. Ten minutes, Skipper. Get the crew topside, Scotty. They ought to see this. Aye, aye, sir. As the crew of the Argonaut gathered to watch the test explosion of the mighty Q-bomb, they're completely unaware that on the other side of the very reef about to be destroyed sits a small boat and two familiar fishermen, W.P. Chesterfield and his companion, Slag. Yes, sir, Slag, my boy. The only thing worse than being become is fishing without bait. Kind of frustrate the bile juicer. Holy cats. Look, Chesterfield. Oh, well, what do we do? He's coming right at us. I suggest that we use a number six hook. What a type of gag. On the other hand, we can always blow into this miserable hunk of rag. Gotta hit us. Hmm, a strange phenomenon, if I do say so myself. Look at this, my little flighty jellyfish. What the? She just wants a back scratch. Reminds me of a pet goldfish I used to have. The only goldfish in Philadelphia that could giggle. Frivolous Fifi. You never forget her. This is ridiculous and itchy well. A mysterious shiny object beneath the sea suddenly attracts the huge whale. Too bad. We were just getting to know one another. Cute little thing. Probably going to Lowell, my boy, to fetch us a few thousand anchovies as a show of affection. Whales are like that, you know. Hey, it's disappeared. I don't think, Mac. The bomb. It's gone! The bomb's gone! Jive! Mohitis! Mohitis! At T minus five minutes, the Q bomb has disappeared! We have no contact with it at this time! Will Admiral McGonagall please contact the flagship immediately? Get that launch over here and on the devil! What's wrong, Captain? How can they. Get all hands below. We've got to get the Argonaut out of here. Aye, Skipper. Yes, sir, my little lobster pup pirate. A grateful whale makes a lovely friend indeed. Here she comes again. Boy, what a monster. Relax, Samson. She just wants her back rubbed again. Can't say as I blame her, however. I'm an excellent back agitator. Hey, she's ticking. How's that again? I said that blast whale's ticking. Like a clock. Or a bomb. My word. A bomb. What do we do, Chesterfield? My boy, they say that with one deep breath, the human lungs can hold two and a half gallons of air. So? So blow your heart out, you idiot. That whale's about to explode. The Q bomb has been swallowed by an affectionate whale. Is this the end of Chesterfield and his companion, Sly? Hold it, Chesterfield. I'm blown out. It's no use, my boy. We barely made it beyond the reef. To rot that missing wind? Meanwhile, aboard the Argonaut. Well, let's see. I got you, Admiral. But it still beats me how that bomb could disappear. Search the area, Fathom. Since we no longer have contact, there's no telling when that bomb will go off. 
Well, I'm establishing a five-mile perimeter. If it's floating anywhere in the area, we'll find it. These are international waters, Bill. You know what that means. I get the message, Maggie. Argonaut out. I've got something, Captain. Where away, Miss B? Approximately one mile off port. Give me a fix. Ronnie, stand by to come about. Standing by. All ahead, three quarters. What do you make of it, Skipper? Well, I'll be. It's Chesterfield in a sailboat. He's be calm. But what's that thing behind him? Bearing 275, Captain. Range, one mile. Mark. Got that, Ronnie? Coming about, sir. Little does Captain Fathom realize that he's heading for a certain danger. If the Q-bomb explodes... We'll be blown to kingdom come, my lad. I can see it's going to be one of those days. Here comes another one. We've got two whales on our hands. So, it's Captain Fathom. Ahoy, Chesterfield. What in the Sam Hill are you two doing in the middle of a test range? You could have been blown to pieces. The Navy was about to use a Q-bomb on this reef. Oh, yes. That explains it, of course. That whale swallowed the bomb. Captain, she's got to be destroyed. What whale? She's gone. I say, my dear Fathom, our appreciation would be never-ending should you be so kind as to get us out of here. Climb aboard, WP. I want to hear more about your whale. As the mighty Argonaut continues her journey, she is chased by a friendly, ticking whale. All right, once again, Chesterfield. You honestly believe this whale of yours swallowed the Q-bomb? Whales, what you tick? Whales do not normally go about the ocean ticking, Captain Fathom. Great day in the morning, Skipper. If she heads for Newport... I know, Scotty. She could wipe out a mess of fishermen. Anything on sonar, Miss Perkins? All clear, Captain. Get us back to port, Ronnie. The least we can do is alert all seaports in this area. Aye, sir. As the Argonaut races back to port, she soon leaves the friendly ticking whale far behind. The disappointed sea beast changes direction and heads back out to sea. This is incredible. You mean that whale actually swallowed the Q-bomb? Without a doubt, my dear. You might mention also that it was done without the slightest provocation upon my part. I, of course, am perfectly innocent. You dumb sea bass. I told you not to mention a word of this to anyone. Don't tell me this is the great Captain Fathom. Tim? If this hits the papers, it'll create a panic in every seaport in the world. You'll make the Navy look ridiculous. Good green. Hadn't thought of that. Science situation, to say the least. I'll make a deal with you, Captain. No deal. You going back out to look for this whale? That's my assignment. Take me with you, and I'll promise not to submit the story without your approval. Well said, my dear. An excellent argument. Yes, indeedy. Absolutely not. I've just filed my report and... And on the front pages of every newspaper in the United States. No. This is ridiculous. The headlines could read, Whale Bombs Navy. Well, Captain? Get your things aboard, Miss... Um... Agatha Fitzgerald. Just call me Aggie. I knew it. You're Aggie Fitzgerald. Whirlwind daughter of the senator from the great state of Texas. You could say that, I reckon. I can think of a lot of things I'd rather say about now. Boy, is he a sawhead. Well, this is a strange twist of fate. Aggie has promised not to submit the story without Captain Fathom's approval. But if she tells her father, it could mean a Senate investigation. Again, in search of the bomb-carrying whale, the Argonaut receives an interesting message. Go ahead, Coast Guard. It's the carrier Houston, Captain. We just received a rather strange report. Yeah. There's a whale blocking her passage. Hmm. How do you know it's the right one? Well, she's a chicken, sir. Sounds sort of like this. I'll be a Texas dude ranch dandy. Uh-huh. We're on our way. I got out. Why'd we have to come along, Chesterfield? We can get killed. A condition of responsibility, Melvin. A Chesterfield never shirks his duty. What he means is, the captain said he'd feed him to the sharks if he didn't help us find that whale. A gross exaggeration, my little blue bonnet. Forgot who he was talking to for a moment. Lucky I'm so even-tempered. Captain, 
Yes, Miss Fitzgerald? What are you going to do if this turns out to be the right whale? What'll we do? Well, we'll try to bait her away from the carrier before she explodes. And just how do you hope to accomplish that, may I ask? Chesterfield? At your service, my dear Fathom. Get into some scuba gear. You're going to play bait for a whale. Bait for a whale? Jumping Jehoshaphat. If you so much as smile, beetle brain, I shall beat you severely about the head and shoulders with a heavy, wet mackerel. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Aircraft carrier, dead ahead, Captain. Stand by to surface. Blow all tanks. Hey, skipper. Take her up, team. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Meanwhile, as the Argonaut heads for the surface, aboard the Houston, a meeting takes place. And I'm sorry if the inconvenience, Senator, but my orders are to stand by. You mean a confounded whale can hold up a United States aircraft carrier? This one can, sir. And just what does that mean, sir? I'm sorry, Senator, but that information is classified. I shall contact Washington at once. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. You're wanted on the bridge. At once. Of all the confounded nonsense. Never heard of such a thing. Blasted whale. Go ahead, Captain. We're sitting a mile astern of you, Admiral. I'm going to try and lure that whale away from your ship. You don't know what this means, Captain. Make it quick. I don't read you, sir. Say again. We have Senator Fitzgerald aboard. Fitzgerald? What in blaze? What's he doing on the Houston? He wanted to be aboard the first ship through the new channel. The one the bomb was to make. That's the name of the game, Admiral. Come again? I'll explain later. Argonaut out. All ahead, one quarter. Aye, sir. You're sure you wish to go through with this suicide mission, Fathom? Take her down 20 fathoms. Aye, sir. Uh, if we don't meet again, Chesterfield, I, uh... My boy, you radiate all the confidence of a wet enchilada. Stand by, Chesterfield. Remember, just get that whale's attention and then head back to the Argonaut. Got it? Zone. How I detest an anxious captain. Good luck, Chesterfield. I hope you make it. I have only one major distress, my dear. One that has plagued me since my youth, many years ago. And that is? I never learned to swim. He gads, what a fiasco. Stand by hatch. All set here, Skipper. We'll keep in touch with Interphone, Chesterfield. Just do as I say. Adieu, Fathom. This has certainly not been a pleasure. Well, don't miss what happens next. Field leaves the Argonaut and heads for the huge aircraft carrier. Miss Fitzgerald says. You're positively inhuman, Captain. I just don't understand you. Yeah, well, no need to burn up a transistor trying, Miss Fitzgerald. Captain, it's the Admiral aboard the Houston. Got it. Go ahead, Admiral. Captain, is there any way you can get a fix on that whale and listen to that ticking? Mm, no. Well, the only way that I could... Well, no, wait a minute. I think there's a possibility. Why? When that Q-bomb is three minutes from exploding, those ticks will speed up. They'll sound like static. I'll get back to you. Argonaut out. Perkins, get me Chesterfield on the intercom. At once, Captain. Come in, Chesterfield. This is the Argonaut. So, the good Captain Fotham has had a change of heart, huh? I knew our fearless leader couldn't be all bad. I shall return immediately. Hold it, Chesterfield. Stay right where you are. Zone. I might have known. Do you see your whale yet? Must you persist in calling that sea monster my whale? I merely scratched the monstrous Iron Toby's back. Well, do you see that whale? She's floating about 100 yards directly ahead of me. OK. Now, here's what I want you to do. While Captain Fathom gives instructions to Chesterfield, aboard the Houston. Washington wishes to know what in the name of Dallas is going on, Admiral. We'll be underway again in a short while, Senator. May I respectfully suggest you go below? You may not. As you wish, Senator. We are about to harpoon that whale. And it can get pretty sticky. Hmm. Why not you say so in the first place? Can't stand the sight of an injured beast. Call me when it's over. I shall do that, Senator. I don't understand, sir. We don't carry any harpoons aboard the Houston. Sorry about that, sailor. Get back to the bridge and call me the minute you hear from Captain Fathom. Uh, yes, sir. We don't carry any harpoons aboard the Houston. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chesterfield nears the friendly whale. Undoubtedly, this jelly belly will prove to be ticklish. I should have written my will before leaving the Argonaut. Well, here goes. Are you listening, Fathom? Go ahead, Chesterfield. 
Now hold the intercom mic right next to her. How's this, Batham? I suppose one quick look won't hurt. Great Caesar's ghost! She's been harpooned! Oh! Oh! I can hear the ticking, Captain. Me too, sir. Why? Oh, yeah. Listen. It's getting faster, Skipper. Shouldn't we get out of here, Captain? If that bomb explodes. Relax, Miss Fitzgerald. If it goes off, you'll never know what hit you. And that, as they say, is a comfort to know. She's out of the way, sir. Alert the engine room. Full speed ahead. Get this ship out of here. Yes, sir. A huge carrier lumbers out to sea. But will she be in time? The Houston is underway, Captain. Ah, good. We may yet have time. Static, sir. Listen, plainsman. I mean, the bomb clicks have speeded up to static, sir. Oh. Uh, quick, we've got to get Chesterfield back aboard. Let's leave him. Some of us got to survive. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a time for this to happen. What is it, Captain? <laughs> Look through the periscope. What's going on, Skipper? It's Chesterfield. Don't ask me how it happened, but he's riding that whale like a bucking bronco. Incredible. No! Uh-oh, he's falling off. All ahead full. But the bomb, Skipper. We'll all... Hang the bomb. Let me have full speed ahead. We've got to rescue Chesterfield. Hang, sir. Head for the surface, Ronnie. We'll need all the speed we can get. Right, sir. The Argonaut surfaces and races for the badly frightened Chesterfield. Will they be there in time? After saving the aircraft carrier Houston from a fiery death, Captain Fathom and his crew race to help Chesterfield. There are only minutes before the Q-bomb explodes. Range, Perkins. 5,000 yards, Captain. And closing. Scotty, stand by the laser beam. If we don't get Chesterfield in the next couple of minutes. Gotcha, Skipper. I got an idea, Captain. Well, spill it. You got a galley aboard this sub? Somebody you think it's chow time? You missed my point, Captain. Just tell me where she is. Directly aft. Keep her on course, Ronnie. I'm going topside. Aye, sir. What is Slag up to? How can the galley of the Argonaut help Chesterfield at a time like this? Ah, there it is. About time you stop, my little Polly Wong. I think we should talk the situation over. Zounds, what luck! Here comes the Argonaut. You'll be lucky if they don't stick a torpedo in you. And I think it'll work, Captain. Oh, it's worth a try. Go ahead. Get on the prow. Slow to one-third. Aye, Skipper. Kind of hate to leave you, my little abalone Annie, but I hate a whale that'll blow up at the slightest provocation. Ahoy, Casterville. A masterful stroke, my boy. You've mutinied and captured the Argonaut. Brilliant! Rob, Chesterfield. We've all come to rescue you. An admirable idea, but... Here, what are you doing? Pouring pepper on your pet. She's about to explode, and you're going to eat her? Sounds, my boy, you've lost your tacos. Watch yourself, Chesterfield. She's beginning to sneeze. <laughs> there goes the bomb, Captain. Grab Chesterfield and get below. That bomb's due to explode any second now. You heard him, Chesterfield. Give me your hand. Slag me, lad. Today you shall receive ten gold stars on your brownie charm. Yes, indeed. The very least I can do for you, Fitzbaum. He's got Chesterfield, Captain. Help them below, Miss Fitz. Yes, Captain. Ronnie, slam her to the firewall. Emergency velocity. Yes, sir. All ahead. Time, Perkins. Thirty seconds, Captain. We'll never make it. Maybe we should go under, Skipper. The concussion might not be as severe. Negative. Our only chance is to stay on top. Booster's activated, Ronnie. All systems go, sir. Fifteen seconds, Captain. Faster, Ronnie. Nothing left, sir. She's wide open. Faster, Roar, the Argonaut, and ever faster. And then... A fantastic sight, Admiral. But didn't we miss the reef? Slightly, sir. We'll have to try again. Washington won't like this. It's a blasted waste of money. Forgive me for saying it, sir, but I'm sure this time they won't mind. That does it. Cruise speed. Man, oh man, oh man.
Now that's what I call cutting it really close, Skipper. Captain Fathom, I... I know, Liz, but we can relax now. The danger's over. For what it's worth, Captain Fathom, I'm not even gonna bother writing up this story. Oh? Nobody'd ever believe it. Why, thanks. Uh, thanks, Aggie. What the? Hey, Chesterfield, look at this. Port so soon? Be right up, my boy. Zounds. Do my eyes deceive me? It's her again. She's followed us. He can't. You realize what this means, Gargantua? I don't get you, Chesterfield. We have, within our very grasp, the fastest whale alive. Just think of it, my little chowder brain. We could take her to Philadelphia. They've never seen a fastback whale. We'll charge an admission, of course. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,